Welcome! E aí, galera, beleza? Bem-vindo à nossa comunidade. Welcome to our community. Hey, what's going on, guys? It is OGC here. Welcome to today's video. Today, we are going over something that is super important. We're going to go over the four different types of shard combos that you can make. This is all prism related. So the four different types, and we're also going to go over what heroes to put specific types on. So stay tuned because this was a frequently asked question uh, recently, so we are going to cover that. Uh, make sure you guys smash the thumbs up button, subscribe if you have not already, and let's jump in. So when it comes to prisms, you can get prisms through uh, participating in the Coliseum if you are not caught up with it. Uh, in the Coliseum, it's an event that comes maybe once a month, and during that event, you can save up your Coliseum points to buy a prism. The other way of getting it is the second full week of the month. Um, there is a thing called the Golden Board or the Lucky Dice for short. Um, in the Lucky Dice, if you do three rolls, you will get a Prism. Uh, I highly recommend, even if you're a free-to-play player, I think it's like it's less than 300 Lenari if you do one per day. Less than 300 Lenari, you can get a Prism. When you get a Prism, there are different types of uh, like builds you can put on them. So there's four different types. The, the four different types are, you can get a prism that buffs your troops, your heroes, there, there's a buffing type, so we'll call them buffs. There is something called a debuff, meaning it's going to make the enemies weaker, so we're calling that a debuff. The third type is dragon, so it's specific to your dragon, it's going to help out your dragon, it's important. The fourth type is going to be called hero, so it really just affects that one hero that it's on. So the first one, uh, which is going to be a buff one, this is an example of one that's on Avalon. And the reason why this is considered a buff one is because it affects the hero, but at the start of the battle, it increases the attack speed of all nearby uh, non-dragon allies by a bunch. So this affects both um, troops and, and every, everything else that's nearby the hero. It gives them a very big buff at the start. The next type is called a debuffing prism. So the point of a debuffing prism is to make the enemies weaker. So for example, Pestilence is a great example. Um, due to Taint's uh, efforts with this type of shard, we no now know that it can stack on the enemies. So why is this a debuffing uh, prism setup? Well, the hero bonus is uh, it reduces the attack and health of all enemy units. Uh, so again, it reduces the enemy's strength. In every 15 seconds, um, it reduces the attack and health of a random enemy uh, unit or hero by 28% for the remainder of the battle. It can sack. So what the point of a debuffing prism is, is it's going to take the enemy's uh, overall strength and make it weaker. So the first one, the buff one that we saw on Avalon, makes your troops and stuff stronger. The debuffing one, instead of making your troops stronger, it takes the enemy's stuff and it makes it weaker. Now the next one is for the dragon. So this is the third one. It is the dragon prism. So it's any prism that is specific to just uh, focusing on your dragon more than anything else. So for the for example, this is a fine amethyst prism setup. I highly recommend everybody out there gets this. Um, this one and the Nora one, which we're, we're getting to next, are two that I think are pretty much mandatory um, for anybody that has those shards. So this is a fine amethyst. With the fine amethyst, you can get the Dragonic Defiance. And what this does is it gives hero bonus, uh, friendly dragon health, plus uh, whatever percentage. But the secondary portion is friendly dragons will receive a 95% damage mitigation shield for seven seconds, or however long, depending on the, the rank of your prism. Now, the reason why this third one is called dragons is it specifically benefits your dragons. Um, so dragons are, are an important part of the game. Dragons are probably one of the coolest parts of the game. So making sure to buff up your dragons and keep them alive, that's going to be super important. The last one is called a hero prism. So this is number four. Uh, with the hero prism, what it does is instead of uh, boosting up your troops or debuffing the enemies or affecting your dragon, it specifically affects your singular hero. So it affects your, your one hero, um, and it doesn't really affect other, uh, other things on, on the battlefield. Now, it could have effects that that one hero affects other things on the battlefield, but it primarily like benefits that one hero. So for example, this is the Dragonic Storm. This is the specific one that makes Nora overpowered. If you have a true ruby, all you need is one, one and done, and uh, put this onto Nora the Dragonic Storm, and you will love it. 
Uh, what what this one does is it will make the hero have bonus range and bonus accuracy. Also, basic attacks have a 15% chance to trigger Dragonic Lightning Strike, dealing a ton of lightning damage to any en enemies in a target area. So the hero type of prism really, really takes your hero and brings it to the next level. So now, really good question. Where do we put each type of uh, prism? So now that we know about all four different types of prisms you can pick, now we have to figure out which heroes to put them on. So we have the buff buffing prisms, the debuffing prisms, the dragon prisms, and the hero specific prisms. So what I would highly recommend doing is, if you have a really good hero type of prism, uh, such as the True Ruby for Nora, what I would do is I would put that onto that hero. So say we have the True Ruby, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to find Nora and we're going to make sure that that prism is equipped on Nora because if it is a hero boosting uh, prism, we're going to want to make sure that it's on the appropriate hero to get that boost. This one is relatively... Um, uh, simplistic in nature it makes a lot of sense if you have one that really boosts up Nora then you're going to want to put it on Nora it makes sense now for the tricky part and this is the really really tricky part what do you do with the other three types you have the buffing one the debuffing one and the dragon specific ones where do you put those so this is what I would highly recommend find your uh, support heroes or your your heroes that that like hang back or your super tanky heroes. I would recommend uh, focusing on them. So if I have any prisms that either buff me, debuff the enemies, or help to keep my dragon alive, I'm going to focus on these types of heroes. So number one is Fenris. Fenris is a great choice because he hangs back in the battlefield, which means he's going to stay alive as long as possible. If you have a prism that has a prism specific effect, such as a hero bonus, uh, which is like the Dragonic one with the armor, um, things like that, or Pestilence, the hero has to be alive for that prism to matter. Now, if you're just going based off of each individual node on the prism, the little portion that adds extra attack, the portion of the prism that acts like the purple skills for the dragon, it doesn't matter if the hero's alive or not. But to get those cool effects, such as the Dragon Mage set, the hero must be alive. So when, when you're finding heroes to put those types of prisms on, the buffing, the debuffing, and the dragon ones, you're going to want to pick very safe heroes. So for example, Fenris is a fantastic choice because he'll hang in the, the back half of the battlefield. He has his wolves going out. Um, he's going to live. One of the, um, one of the risks with uh, Fenris is he tends to be on people's stall sides. So if your stall side collapses, he's probably going to die. Uh, also, if your assault side collapses, you're probably going to lose. So, I, I mean, overall, Fenris is a fantastic choice. Elena is the next one that, that really uh, kind of stands out amongst all of the others. Uh, Elena also will hang in the back half of the battlefield. She's very important to keep alive. So if you have something that buffs your army, debuffs the enemies, or affects your dragon, Elena is another really good option. Another great option is going to be Ophidius. So Ophidius um, should be pretty far back in the battlefield. Your goal should always be to keep Ophidius alive uh, and take down the enemy Ophidius. So I, I think uh, Ophidius is a great choice um, for a buff, debuff, or dragon type, type of uh, prism. Avalon. Avalon's surprisingly pretty good, especially if he's in like the back half so he doesn't just run straight forwards. Uh, now for dwarfs, this might not be the uh, the go-to. This might be better on something uh, with, with another race where it's not so aggressive. Um, but Avalon can be pretty useful. The other options are, um, I am actually really starting to like uh, having it on Gafgar. So whichever hero you have your two-star Solantris on, so say if you're playing humans and you have Virian and, and you have the Solantris on Virian, he could, in theory, he's going to live for a long time. And same thing with Gafgar. If you're playing Dwarf, I mean, Gafgar gets over 20 seconds with his uh, his ultimate with massive damage mitigation. You throw on a two-star Galantris, he's guaranteed, or pretty close to guaranteed, uh, 30 seconds in, into the fight with living. That's plenty of time. The, the fight should be decided within 30 seconds. Um, you can in... I think that these are other possibilities, but you have to protect these heroes or make sure that they typically don't die for you. 
but uh, things such as Yip or um, Flores, I think Flores is fantastic because she hangs back. I, I put her up there with like Elena and everything. She's she's very useful and will stay alive. In fact, I, I do have a prism on her uh, that buffs, debuffs, or affects the dragon. Um, so pretty much you want heroes that hang back. But if we look, look this over once more, we have Fenris, Elena, um, Ophidius, possibly Avalon, depending on, on your setup. That That's four good ones right there. Um, plus uh, Flores, that's that's five. And then whoever you have your Slaunches on, so if that's Gafkar or Virian, um, that, that's a, a, almost a 6-1. So that's six really good options for your uh, prisms that affect everything on the battlefield or, or offer significant buffs. So that's for your buffs, debuffs, and your dragon. Again, if you have a hero-specific prism, such as the True Ruby Dragonic Storm uh, for Nora, of course, make sure that is on the appropriate hero. So, hopefully that helps you out, guys. Um, hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight on where to actually place your prisms on your heroes. Uh, for each one individually, I, I can't really just say do this or do that or this is the best thing out there to do. Uh, you'll have to play around and figure out for yourself which prisms do you prioritize over others? Which ones are the most important to have out there at all times? Personally, I like the uh, the Dragon Mage set. I, I think that one's absolutely huge. So I'm going to put that onto my safest hero. The other things to consider is which one of your heroes do you see dying early more often? So if you have, uh, say your Flores for whatever reason keeps dying within the first 10 seconds of the battle, maybe you don't put it on Flores. Maybe you put it on Elena because she tends to live a very long time for you. So there isn't a one size fits all answer for this. Some of it you, you'll have to play around with in trial and error and uh, don't be afraid to, to make some changes. So with that, guys, I, I hope that this really helps you guys out. And uh, if you guys don't mind smashing the thumbs up button, I, I would greatly appreciate that. Subscribe if you have not subscribed already. Share this in your house or with your friends. That way you guys can all get stronger together. Uh, in the description of this video and all videos, we have a bunch of really cool stuff. Uh, that cool stuff includes a link to our Facebook page, to our Discord, uh, to our Patreon page. If you want to further support this channel, thank you to the Patreons out there. You guys are absolutely amazing. Uh, we also have a merch store, so go check it all out, and I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Take care, guys.